Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sunmin Miller. Hey there, friends. Uh, so last week, um, uh, precepts came up in, in Sun's talk, and uh, it's about a month or so, maybe uh, more, maybe six weeks ago now, I uh, so did a talk on um, just about the precepts in general, and I'm come back to it again uh, tonight, because like I said the last time, you know, this is foundational practice for me. I go back to it over and over again, reassess how the uh, precepts are playing out in my life, so a lot of... Uh, Good, you know, fodder for uh, for talks there. Uh, and so this one is about supporting all living creatures and refraining from killing, um, which I think is a very wise re um, reimagining of the more uh, traditional precept of not killing, which is which is simple, but life is complex. And what sparked this was that less. The talk that I gave, you know, five, six weeks ago <clears throat> on the precepts, it was, um, you know, one of you had said that uh, about the difficulty in maintaining that precept about not killing because of um, uh, own, your own, uh, the health issues, right? You know, needing, I, I think the implication is needing to, uh, to eat meat to deal with own personal uh, health issues. And uh, some, I, I thought of something later that I wish I had thought to say at the time when that came up in the in the discussion. You know, if we rethink the precept as uh, um, I vow to support all living creatures and refrain from killing, then we have to remember that we too are living creatures whom we need to support, that we need to support ourselves, that that is part of supporting all living creatures. Um, and so, you know, something like eating meat can seem like a real straightforward one, forward one there. You know, don't kill, support all living creatures, however you want to say it. Okay, you know, don't, you know, it can seem simple. And especially, you know, I think something like with, uh, with climate change, everybody just stop eating meat. Okay, I mean, that seems like a real simple way, uh, like the least disruptive way of taking out an enormous chunk of our contribution to climate change, right? You know, because you could, you could wipe out an entire industry that way and, you know, sure, um, where it would be, wouldn't be nearly as disruptive as, it's going to be, uh, you know, eliminating the fossil fuel industry, which of course we need need to do, you know. But but it's not simple. So I imagine a place like uh, a real arid place, it's like you know, think like Argentina, which has a massive beef industry, or um, you know, or just somewhere else where it's a real arid climate. You think, boy, you know, if people there were to support themselves entirely off of intensive agriculture producing plants that could actually be more environmentally destructive. Because first of all, you're gonna have to do massive irrigation and chemical fertilizers and so forth just to get a decent amount of food out of the soil. So you probably end up spending more, uh, expending more oil and so forth doing that, pumping CO2 into the air than you would with raising the, uh, the cattle who you can you know, raise in relatively arid, arid environments. Um, of course, you're still killing the cows and that's a bummer. But, but you know, the question, it just becomes more complex then. You know, maybe the intensive agriculture for, you know, maybe you're not supporting all living beings particularly well if you go to arid places and say, hey, stop raising cattle and you all got to start growing lots of plants and using all these chemical fertilizers and, and using massive irrigation projects. Or I think of like the, um, um, the 90 folks in, um, in Alaska, the, uh, one of the many native peoples of Alaska, and for them, uh, salmon, it, I mean, it's a fundamental part of their identity. Uh, the salmon, um, the salmon fishing, eating salmon, it's a huge part of their identity. And how, how uh, you know, Americans and, and their perpetual westward content, conquest, I mean, still continuing uh, to this day of um, killing, displacing uh, native people. Uh, contributing to the destruction of their their languages and and so forth. Uh, I mean, this is you know at the barrel of a gun. Um, you know, Americans have taken you know you know white, black, Asian Americans have taken so much. White Americans, in particular, have taken so much from the native peoples of of uh, North America. And then you can go to the um, um, uh, Dena and say 
okay, well now you got to give up salmon too. Um, you know, because of my particular, uh, you know, precepts, it just seems, you know, I've already given up enough. I'm not, I am not going to go to any native peoples and say, all right, you've got to give that up now too, uh, because, you know, you know, the, the precepts that the, um, Denina are living, living creatures as well, just like me. So I need to support them if I'm the, um, practices precept. Of course, so are the salmon. So it's complex and, and it's difficult. Um, I think of uh, rural Pennsylvania. I grew up in a, in a, well, it's probably a small city in Pennsylvania in uh, Johnstown, um, you know, but also connections to the broader, you know, more rural area. And I, and I just know how for rural Pennsylvanians, especially poor and working class Pennsylvanians, hunting is a huge deal. Uh, you know, I grew up, I grew up hunting. And I remember as a kid, being absolutely dumbfounded when I found out that at really fancy restaurants in Europe, probably in the US too, I don't know. Uh, I don't, it's not places I go to, but I found, at least in Europe, at really fancy restaurants, you could get deer meat there and pay a lot of money for it. I thought that's nuts. I thought deer meat was something that poor and working class people ate, right? Because you can, you know, you spend, I don't know what, nowadays it'd be, you know, depending on the, on the, type of bullets, you know, it's 25 to 50 cents for a bullet and, you know, kill a deer and you've got um, meat there that especially for poor rural Pennsylvanians, that can lead to, can contribute to a serious increase in the quality of life, especially think of young, you know, young kids with nutrition. We know that kids growing up, um, sufficient protein is really essential for the, um, for you know, bodily development and, and, and mental uh, mental development, you know, our, our brains and our bodies just really protein intensive compared compared to most animals, and so you could produce a considerable increase in quality of life for poor and working class, especially uh, poor rural Pennsylvanians who use the hunting. Uh, so and they are so they are uh, living creatures who, like me, who I should support, and of course, so are the deer. So it's complicated and, and hard. Um, and so all this require a lot of, of mindfulness, um, you know, being aware of these decisions, but we're always, so in these decisions, as we assess how to support all living creatures, we're always doing it with absolutely insufficient information and with, in dealing with factors that are uh, more complex than any of us individually are really going to be able to, to, uh, to sort out. Uh, you know, it might be easier, you know, for some rather than others, you know, you live in a, you know, I live in a very humid area, agriculture is easy, You've got tons of farms around here, every week I pick up a, a ton of vegetables from, from a farm, for me, no problem, whatever, you know, I don't eat meat, whatever, not a, not a big deal, it's easy, I also don't have the, any, you know, health issues that would make it any sort of debate for me, you know, but, so it's easy for me, but, you know, thinking about the broader side, I mean, it gets really complex and hard, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, it recognize that complexity, um, and you know, and sometimes maybe we can find other ways to support our other living creatures. You know, if you, you know, whatever, you got a family member who is, uh, you know, really for whatever, just the way that their body makeup is, really feels a need for for eating meat. You know, instead of telling the person, oh, you know, stop that, that's bad or something. You know, good if unless there's you know serious health reason really needs the person really does need to do it. You know, you can do some research on. Um, you know, whatever that person's particular issue is, research on what are some, you know, alternative things for, um, to support that, whatever that health issue is, that'd be a way to support the various living creatures involved, that individual person, you know, family member, plus the, you know, animals who would be eaten, um, or, uh, you know, thinking about poor rural Pennsylvanians, figure out ways to, um, to alleviate poverty, right, so it's not, eating, hunting and eating meat isn't such a, a big, uh, a, a big deal. So there's, you know, you can find ways around this without, you know, ordering people around. Um, well, and also providing yourself flexibility, trying to figure out your own ways that you need to support all living creatures. So yeah, uh, support all living creatures and uh, refrain from killing, you know, but boy, who knows what that means? Um, just given all of the, the complexity, I mean, it's just, this, this complex calculus that is maybe, you know, beyond an individual, if you're going to try and get everything, you know, there's no absolute certainty, no completeness to it, to this precept. 
There's too much going on, too much complexity, and we operate from too little knowledge. Um, and so we are living creatures ourselves, so we have to support our, ourselves individually as living creatures. And part of that is then also, you know, giving, cutting ourselves a break when we, you know, make errors, find ourselves making errors um, when it comes to supporting all living creatures or, you know, find ourselves doubting ourselves, just having, you know, compassion for ourselves is, that is part of supporting ourselves as living creatures. Um, so maybe we all be filled with love and kindness. Maybe we all be well. May we be peaceful and at ease. May we see things as they are. Thank you. <laughs>